Right, so I got this book of all of Van Gogh's letters that he wrote and have survived. I bought it bloody yonks ago when I went to uh, the National Gallery. Um, and it's a hefty boy, and it's been on my shelf for ages, and I never really looked at it. If I'm honest, I didn't even open it. After buying it, but last night I thought, fuck it. I had a flick through it, I read like one or two random ones, and I was like, shit, this is really good. And then I kind of like read the majority of his letters in a day today, and wow. We all praise Van Gogh. Van Gogh, I don't know. Everyone says, I will say Van Gogh, but everyone says it's Van Gogh. But I will always say Van Gogh. Um, as a painter, everyone's always praised him as for his artistic ability in, you know, on canvas and paper, but after reading this, wow, he is an amazing writer. The way he uses his linguistics, the techniques he uses, the met metaphoric, um, just the way he writes is beautiful and it's so intelligent, even in these little short brothers with uh, letters which the majority are written to his brother. You know, they, they don't, you're little, you think they didn't have text, they didn't have email back then, of course they didn't, but this this is what the equivalent was to then, but we don't write in any sense of artistic, poetic, almost language, but he did in such a lovely, lovely way, but also there's something so sad about the writings. If you look into his life and find the dates where the most traumatic occurrences happened to him, he goes from writing to his brother Theo, or his best friend, or a girl he liked, almost daily. There's at least one letter within every two, three days. Then there are huge spades, the period where he most famously cut off his ear. He went from writing multiple times to people a week for no letters between, um, I think it's the end of November to February the next year. So you can see his own personal life coming through these letters, and you can also see sort of the immense depression he was going to around the asylum periods and the most famous Starry Starry Night periods, you can hear in his words the despair and sort of fact that he finds the world so beautiful and wants to enjoy it but just can't because of himself almost and he had less of a continuing, well he definitely had a continuing mental illness, but less of a constant mental illness and more so of a sporadic attacking illness is that jumped at him at random times and sort of baited off for a while. And you can really tell that where there are periods where the letters are just casual letters, you know, I hope you're doing okay. I really enjoyed the time you came over. I really enjoyed what we did this time. You can have a few months of that and then a period of just condense where you can just literal madness, which is a word I hate, but seriously, you can see that through his writing and you know, you can see not only his spiral, but also the moments in his life where things could have picked up and then ended up going even further down. And he takes these most usual, normal, day-to-day -day things and takes them so deeply, so spiritually and so emotionally that you can almost understand why this man suffered so much. He was taking everything so meaningfully even in the almost menial and he shows so much love for the people around him especially for Theo his brother but it's almost as if he the failings in his life weren't because what people thought was his unlove for them it was a I love you but can't love myself enough to appropriate that type of thing and it's just so intimate and intense to have something like this alongside his wonderful paintings which I love so very much and honestly these show him as a genius more so than his paintings if I'm being honest entirely. There is pure unadulterated tortured madman genius in this and you can read it in every page of how complex yet how astoundingly smart this dying man was. He felt the world in every way and wanted to be loved by it the way he loved it. And it's almost, he 
failed he didn't fail, he failed to succeed in being failed almost. He did nothing wrong apart from have the brain he had which tore him down. He was a beauty himself and he was self-aware of nearly everything he needed to be. But it just so candidly fell apart and he lost it all because he had it. It's so sad, so wonderful. And so immensely beautiful. If you're a fan of Van Gogh and his paintings, check this out. If you're not, check this out. One, it might help you enjoy his art more. Two, it's just an astounding thing to read through. So, uh, the Letters of Van Gogh by, obviously, Van Gogh.